For those that watched the previous video, you saw where the field coil and the universal output transformer is actually open. And uh, that probably stems from uh, some old capacitors. Every capacitor that I removed from the receiver itself was leaky and or to the point where they were shorted. So not surprised, especially with the uh, high DC voltages from the uh, transformer that was placed in the set. So we'll save this particular uh, loudspeaker with the uh, fill coil that's open and a universal uh, output transformer and see if we can make any repairs on this as we approach uh, fall into the winter. For now, I'm going to uh, substitute another uh, six inch loudspeaker that has an output transformer turns ratio that's a uh, match in my case for the uh, 6K6 uh, GT tube that I'm going to uh, use in the uh, output stage. Let's look back at the uh, power supply and then we'll look at a problem that we need to uh, solve or mitigate regarding the uh, high voltages on the B plus side. Before we move forward with the uh, high voltage discussion, take note here of the part number on the back of the loudspeaker, 504123. Doing a little search on uh, world radio history, I was able to find a couple schematics for reference that actually use this particular loudspeaker. So this unit probably came out of a Crosley radio or a, a Firestone model 4A21 or 4A22. And the schematic itself was a good reference because it does uh, point back to the fill coil being uh, 1,000 ohms. So that's a good reference uh, number to note, and that matches the uh, resistor network that was in place in the original power supply. The other thing, too, looking at uh, the red book, this also cross-references back to a, a Jensen ST-166 and a Qualm 6 Echo 10. In both cases, the uh, fill coil is called out at 1,000 ohms of DC resistance and the speaker impedance of 3.2 ohms, which was typical for this period of time. Let's reference the uh, schematic first on the Firestone model 4A21, 4A22. And uh, just look at the uh, voltage drop across the fill coil to better understand what the uh, capacity of this particular fill coil was. Locating the schematic that has the fill coil DC resistance comes in handy. We can take those numbers now along with the uh, voltages that are called out, use Ohm's law, and calculate the current flow through the fill coil. So let's do the math real quick. So to calculate I, or current, all we're doing is taking the filament voltage, that being the 305 volts off of that 5Y3GT. You see we're minus 240, which is the voltage there on the screen of the 6K6GT. We'll divide that by the resistance of the fill coil, that being 1,000 ohms. And you can see that gives us 0 0.065 amps, or 65 milliamps. And you can see we can also take that same numbers, the 5Y3GT filament voltage of uh, 305 minus the uh, 240 from the screen of the 6K6GT, divide that by the uh, I current of 0 0.065, and we back in to the uh, 1000 ohm fill coil is called out on the schematic as well. In reviewing the schematic here of the uh, Music Air Radio, you'll see at one time there was an option to have a separate synchronous vibrator power supply to generate that B plus voltage for the set off of a 6 volt battery. 
At some point during its life, you can see someone converted this back to uh, AC and placed a uh, transformer in the set. So let's look at the uh, transformer real quick and some of the uh, measurements that I uh, made while doing some of the uh, recapping work. For those out there that have watched my channel in the past, you guys have seen me do this. What I'm going to do, which I believe is a safer approach, I'm going to use my audio signal generator. I'm going to generate a signal around 60 hertz at around 5 volts RMS to the primary side of the transformer. And then we'll take a look and record the output measurements of the transformer for the high voltage windings back to center tap as well, in addition to uh, capturing the uh, heater string for the 5Y3 GT, which should come back to 5 volts and the other heaters at 6.3 volts. Again, the uh, voltages should read or compute just a little higher because this will be with no load. So under load, of course, you'll see a reduction in the actual measured results. So here's a look how the Music Air radio has been modified. Again, with the uh, synchronous uh, power supply removed, where we were converting uh, DC back to AC, we just have an AC transformer itself. We extrapolated those uh, AC voltage measurements, and you can see the uh, design here, your typical full wave rectifier. And you can uh, also see the uh, value capacitors I went back with. 16 microfarad on the front side, uh, rated at 600 volts, and uh, 20 microfarads, 450 on the output side. And you'll see here also I'm showing the fill coil of 1,000 ohms. The uh, substitution that I made is 1,500 ohms to help reduce the uh, B-plus voltage there going over to the uh, screen of the output tube. Again, I've substituted a 6K6 GT for the 6G 6G. And the modifications itself that were made to the speaker plug on the radio itself, where the field coil was connected there to the two larger pins of the plug itself, which were not utilized initially. So here's a little chart that I created to capture some of the uh, results that I measured from the Music Air radio after uh, doing some of the repairs. And you can see my concern was the uh, high voltages back over to uh, some of the tubes, in particular some of the tubes that I substituted, making certain that I did not exceed the maximum uh, DC ratings. Indeed, that is the case. So uh, what I'm going to do is just lower the uh, DC back down to what's called out on the schematic or close to that, probably within 10%. And if you look over to the left, you'll see my line input voltage. And to get where I needed to be, if you look at the green of the uh, plate, 6S7 is a reference point uh, right here. I needed my line input voltage to be 92 volts. Of course, we don't want to drop the line input voltage because that would impact the uh, heaters as well. If I operate the uh, radio at 92 volts, my uh, heater string is uh, about 25% less than it should be. So that's not good for the tubes, and your emissions will also be impacted by that as well. So you can see overall I'm looking for about a 115 volt uh, drop in the B+. Plus. And to get that, again, you can see above how I used the uh, 5Y3GT filament 
and the uh, screen voltages to understand what the uh, voltage drop was across the fill coil divided by that new fill coil DC resistance of 1500 ohms and uh, calculated the uh, current in uh, amps and uh, milliamps for reference. So looking down again at the bottom here, you can see I've got a 115 volt drop. We'll use the uh, 26 milliamps and I can calculate the uh, resistor value that I need here which will be placed in the center tap location to ground on the transformer. And then you can see I have an empirical correction factor, and that correction factor is just based on the uh, low DC voltage to the tubes, creating less emissions. So I found in most cases, not only on this radio, but others, I'm having to increase the uh, calculated resistor value by uh, 10 to 15 percent. So you can see my calculated uh, value is 49.54. I'll choose a, a 5k and you can see the wattage math below and with an overhead factor of times 10 and I'll expand on that more in just a moment. So let me place that in the receiver here real quick. And uh, we'll look at the uh, voltages here back at the uh, 6S7 with 120 volts applied to the line input with the uh, 5K resistor installed. And uh, just make certain that our uh, calculations and what we see here works out to be within 10% uh, or so. You guys can see after doing the recapping and getting the out of tolerance uh, resistors replaced, the radio is playing really well. An RF alignment still needed, of course. We'll go ahead and check some of the uh, voltages again if you don't have the uh, knowledge or training to do so. Um, I advise you don't do so. And uh, of course, if you elect to do so, you're doing so at your own risk. Again, you're dealing with extremely high voltages that uh, can be lethal. I'll leave the volume turned down. Let me glance over at the uh, Variac and make certain that our uh, line input voltage is still around 120 volts. And I'm about 120.5, so I'm just a little north of 120, which is fine. And uh, you can see I've got the uh, power resistor just laying down here, jumped in between the uh, center tap location and ground. And I'm going over to the uh, plate itself of the uh, 6S7 tube here, and uh, we'll check voltage, and you can see that we're spot on. Hopefully that's showing up here with the uh, lights above my head at about 120 volts. So that was our target where we wanted to be. So that's a good sign. So the uh, math has worked out. Let me uh, power the uh, receiver off for a moment and uh, hook up the uh, multimeter here and let's look at DC current flowing through the uh, return path here at that center tap location and see if it is close to uh, what 26 uh, milliamps as we calculated. And it looks like my line input voltage is hovering around 120.5 or 120.6. And again, our calculated uh, current consumption was around uh, 26 uh, milliamps. Hopefully we'll be within uh, a percent or so of that. We'll let the uh, set continue to warm up here. Okay, we're spot on there as far as our uh, DC current uh, that was calculated as well. So that's a good sign. 
Let's uh, move over and take a look at the uh, power resistor that I'm going to uh, use in this situation so we can understand the uh, wattage uh, dissipation and uh, basically uh, I'm going to uh, mount that to the chassis as a heat sink. You guys can see the uh, resistor here that I've chose to use, that being a uh, Dell wire wound resistor, chassis mount, 50 watt, 5K at 1%. Go back and look at some of the uh, technical data and you'll see, even though it's a uh, 50 watt resistor, I'm not getting uh, 50 watts uh, you know, dissipation out of the uh, resistor itself. So just kind of backing into the math and stuff, looking at the uh, data. You can see I wanted to understand my uh, heat sink power rating. And uh, you can see they recommend 291 square inch surface area. And their uh, ambient temperature rating of uh, 90% at uh, 50 degrees Celsius, 122. I've uh, derated the performance of the resistor due to uh, mounting under the chassis. So I'm going to stick with this number here. That gives me uh, 45 watts and then one of the biggest factors here I'm only going to be able to use about 9% of the recommended surface area for my uh, heat sink so again I'm estimating that's going to cost me about 45% or 20 watts so the effective value of the uh, power resistor here is probably only going to be around 25 watts that's fine. You can see I calculated 3 watts. It still gives me an overhead of about 8.3. Thus, that's the reason I chose such a high wattage uh, resistor. I couldn't just put a 3 watt in or a 10 watt in and expect the uh, resistor to uh, last under load. It would uh, overheat. Again, if someone was engineering this uh, from scratch, you would never use a resistor to throw away energy and uh, create heat anyway. Again, I'm just going back and uh, retrofitting something that's already been somewhat re-engineered at some point in its life. With some cooler weather and less humidity on the horizon, hopefully we'll get started soon on the Music Air refinishing there to the left and the Crosley 718 there to the right. Thanks for watching and take care folks.